Welcome back, boys and girls. Ooh, that's uber creepy. Yeah, that's creepy. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> I, I just went to. Welcome back, boys and girls, to another episode of Full Circle. I'm your host, Odo Harmon Jr. You can find me at all your favorite social medias across the board for the most part at Odo Harmon Jr. And I'm Jared Fredette. You can find me at Tumelo. We have a great show for you today. We'll be discussing a Marvel DC Heroes Powerless or Power Down showdown. I promise it'll make sense later. We'll be discussing geek jargon, geek words you need to know. Something that we'll return to in the future as the show progresses, but we've learned there's been a void of lack of understanding of what certain words mean. We're going to correct that. But first and foremost, we'll be talking about the Digimon 20th anniversary. And I feel I should preface this segment that this is one of my anime sins. I've actually never seen Digimon. I was that kid who thought it was a Pokemon ripoff and refused to see it based on principle. Ah, all they, they all owned in Mon. That's stupid. So that's a... Uh, I just have to clear the, clear the room, clear the air, get that out. Well, Jared, I have a surprise for you. Uh-huh. Dun, 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 Digimon! Ah! Which is actually a jingle they use in the show. He wouldn't know that. I don't know. So he didn't I understand didn't the, the little appreciation of the reveal. But I have the DVD box set of the first season of Digimon. Which, you know, I would just, just go ahead and slide it over here and just <laughs> right there. There you go. That would be my weekend watching. All right. Now we got that out the way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Digimon is celebrating its 20th anniversary, or it will be celebrating its 20th anniversary next year mm-hmm. because it came out in 1999, right before the millennia, which, which is kind of fun. I think it's cutesy in a way because, mm-hmm. you know, Digimon Digital World. But yes, so in honor of the 20th anniversary, that will be releasing a new survival not horror game, but a tactical survival game in the Digimon world where characters can die, because Digimon, unlike Pokemon, can die. It's so cruel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they can speak and stuff, so that game's looking real interesting. It's going to come out on the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch, and it will be... Is it multiplayer? I don't believe so. Oh. But it, it will play like a graphic, like a visual novel. Half visual novel and then half actual RPG battling, building up your Digimon. And say so you have over like something like 100, 300 possible Digimon you can play with and do stuff with. But it, it's, it's looking really interesting. It's, <laughs> Were there ever 300 Digimon in the in the show? I only ever saw the six. Oh, no, there, there, there was countless. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, my. Well, <laughs> well, you know, like they're, they're the base Digimon, you know, that can digivolve into their other forms. Okay, that's fair. That's and fair. then, but no, yeah, there's, there's always been like too many to count. Oof. Like they that can easily be well over a thousand to like it's and it's can, it's real interesting. And you complain about Pokemon being too numerous. <laughs> you know, once I think you watch it, you'll learn that like not only can Digimon evolve, they can digivolve into other strands and lines because they're again they're data. It's true. And and so when you augment them or if they have new forms and changes, you know, it kind of makes sense. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Um are are the kids still like ten? Oh, they're not. They're not 10. Like, in a tweet I saw, I will not take credit for this. They have grown up unlike Ash Forever 10 Ketchum. That's fair. <laughs> and so, the big announcement from this is that they're creating a new movie called... It's now being the Digimon Adventure movie because the first season was just called Digimon Adventure 01. Mm-hmm. And then the second season came out, which is trash. I know people like it, but it's trash. Third season, eh. Fourth season, amazing. Everything after the fourth season just kind of... Trash fire. Yeah, trash fire. So for those who know, the original kids is pretty much everyone's fond of them. Mm-hmm. And so Try came back, kind of ignored season two, but still called itself Try, and picked up where the kids last saw their Digimon at the end of the original series. Okay. And then um, it was supposed to be an emotional reunion, but they've grown with us, so it's, it's a much mature story. But I feel like since... It could be a result that some of the original players in the project wasn't with it, that it didn't hit as hard as it was supposed to. It became a melodramatic drama featuring Digimon. Oh. Mm. So I respect its maturity, mm-hmm. but its delivery wasn't... It was subpar. Yeah, it was it, just to put it... it fell short. But the original artist, who was not part of Digimon Tri, the original producer, who was not part of Digimon Tri, and the creator, which... I think was a part of Digimon Tribe, but in a just name on the billboard aspect. In the same way J.K. Rowling was a part of the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's coming back to, you know, forefront the movie. So since we got, you know, all the big dogs on board, so it's going to take place after Tribe. They were approximately 12 in the original series, 
12, I mean, 17, 18, and try, and now they're going to be young adults, 22, 23. Okay. And do, do they keep, do they keep their partner Digimon? Yes, they keep their partner Digimon. Okay. okay. That the like that the, bond that's yeah, formed. Yeah, the, like and the Digimon, unlike Pokemon, it's not like Digimon aren't something that you can go and be like, you're on my team. I collected you. Like once once you have your partner Digimon, that is your partner Digimon. Okay. If your partner Digimon was to die, you just no longer have a Digimon. Could you could you earn the friendship of another Digimon? You, so you could you they they are friends with other Digimon. Like for example, they're friends with the Digimon that are the partners of their friends. Okay. They are friends with Digimon they've met in the digital world. Okay. But it's not their partner. Their partner they can directly influence. Like they can help them digivolve. They can do things that other Digimon can't do because they have the human partner counterpart. Okay. That allows them... Again, if you watch the show, it would all make perfect sense. Okay, it's, it's, yeah. it's making more sense to me as you've explained yeah. it. So, for example, when a Digimon digivolves, like, that's their new form. Kind of uh-huh. like when a Pokemon evolves, like, they're, they're stuck as that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, random factors play into why certain Digimon digivolve. Versus the kids' Digimon, they can... Because they have their partner, they can digivolve at any given time. Mm-hmm. But they revert back to their original forms because reasons, just to <laughs> save injury. Like, they can. Okay. But they have the ability to digivolve and go back because of their human partners. Okay. It's just kind of like, um, what would it be, like, card captures or any classic anime where it's like, yeah, I'm really this powerful demon, but for simplicity's sakes, I'm your cow- house cat. <laughs> right? Well, also for simplicity's sake, so let's say, unlike dying like another Digimon would, they would just revert back. Oh, I saw this, right? They become, yeah. like, eggs, right? Yeah, like, so so that did happen. One Digimon did die, but since his partner was there and he was still as Digivice, the, the power of Digivice was just able to just revert him back to the egg form. Okay. And then, then they they had it. They went through a moral thing of, like, it will it still be the same Patamon? Was it? It, it was. <laughs> like, they were worried about that first, like, because, like, you know, many of the same Digimon exist. You know, it's not just the one. So they were afraid, like, he was just giving... He was going to be given a new Patamon, and it wouldn't be his Patamon. Okay. But, you know, through the power of the powers that be, it was the same one. Okay, that's that's nice. Do, do we get to see... Okay, was this was this canonical? Was this canon where they, like, they put on, like, the Digimon, like, a Gundam suit? <laughs> so, in Season 4, they became Digimon. They did not put on Digimon. But there okay. was the Season Digimon Fusion where Digimon became Legos. And what? They didn't be actually become Legos. It but wasn't just like it, it, it was called Digi Cross Illusion. That sounds Di- not great. <laughs> it, again, everything after season four is trash. Okay, but I digress. They're making a new movie. The kids are twenty two, and since the original artist is back, because a lot of people didn't like try because the, a lot of the models were vastly different, mm-hmm. and also it looked stereotypically anime everyone looks like the same character with very minute differences Mm -hmm. i didn't like a new character they added she she literally was the cause of 90 percent of all the melodrama and i was just like why are you here to shake things up why to be dramatic she was one of those like i brought a terrible fate it would just be better if i died character Uh, and you know everyone's like uh, don't go off and die you're important no one should go off and die (laughs) That's not what I'm saying. You're, you're <laughs> yeah. saying if you make a problem, you should fix it. Yes. Or <laughs> or something or, like or, that. Or, or, or so. Fix it by not dying. That is not a solution. It is never a solution. Oof. Anyway, Digimon is great. Twin of Anniversary is happening next year. They're making a new movie, a new game. Jared's going to watch it, and he's going to come back to a later episode. We're going to go full circle on this. He's going to see how great it was and how he was a fool. A fool the whole time. But if I heard you correctly, I heard you ask if something was canon in the show. What I does sure that did. Mean? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> it's part of geek jargon. What do we mean when we say something is canon? We mean it is officially a part of the main storyline. It is deemed from the creators handed down to the consumers that this is fact. So I will break that down to very simple terms. Our geek jargon word of the day, or first word of the day, is canon. That is C-A-N-O-N. It is not something that shoots large iron balls at things, like Jared said, and his very long out, but very accurate definition. It means something is official. To, with a little aid from Urban Dictionary, per them, the official definition is another word for official. 
used quite often in fan fiction to differ to differentiate differentiate there we go between the official storyline and which the fan fiction people have made. This is also important beyond fan fiction for things a lot like Marvel and DC who constantly reboot their series. So is the Arrow on the CW canon to the DC timeline? No. no. Is the Marvel Cinematic Universe even t- uh, canon to the comic books? No. no. But uh, the MCU does try to stay as true to form as possible. Mm-hmm. So what makes it official? Marvel, the comic book people, and the authors and creators, the people who came up with the characters and storylines, make things canon. If they say it didn't happen, then it is not canon. Right. For example, Batman's parents dying that led him become the Batman is canon and forever will be canon. Well, barring the alternate universe where... <laughs> but that's but, not a canon universe. It's an alternate spin-off universe. That's so. becoming not canon. That doesn't mean someone can't create a new Batman show and one of his parents survive and Just, they go to the sidetrack award. Yeah, that's still tr- you know traumatic. It's true in that show. But it is not canon because it's not official. Because it was not created or approved by the creator and are the people in charge of the storyline at the parent originating company. Canon. So like canon, can you tell me what a tank is? Well, it's a big giant war machine that shoots ballistic missiles and other objects at people and it goes kaplooey. I mean, it's kind of close, right? Yeah. So we're talking about geek jargon nerd things and things of that nature Mm -hmm. so jared what is a tank tank is a big heavy roadblock that should occupy like this is pretty much in gaming right that should occupy the main bad guy's attention it should take the brunt of all hits it's like mm, i don't have a good parallel here maybe like a snorlax just imagine a big (laughs) snorlax or literally from team fortress 2 the heavy like big heavy character high hit points can just put up a wall between you and everybody else who needs to do everything yeah, like Jared said, like a Snorlax in the game, Snorlax has a lot of health, hit points, can take a lot of damage before taking out. It is really hard to take down a tank character in one hit. Damn near impossible most of the times without, you know, any boosted features. Mm-hmm. Like in Team Fortress 2, the tank can run in the middle of the battlefield and just absorb damage. <sighs> so, again, let's go to the actual definition of tank, again, from Urban Dictionary. Tank, a noun, a player character typically typically in a MMORPG. That stands for Massively Multiplayer Online Role-Playing Game that is able to occupy an aggressor, some, somebody that's attacking you, trying to do you harm, and take the blunt force of the aggressor or uh, occupying enemy's attacks. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I.e. like a tank. Exactly. And like a tank, they usually can also take damage and deal damage well. Right, they're not right. just yeah. They're not just uh, cannon fodder or um, bullet magnets. Yeah, granted, they don't usually have the highest or best dealing at attack, but they can. Right, and usually, classically, they have support units. So while they're taking damage, someone's either healing them, buffing them, or doing some type of aid. Mm-hmm. Tank, tank. Uh, as we're discussing all these big words that you need uh, to discuss geek culture we're kind of having a meta discussion on geek culture what is meta you ask i'm glad you asked oh that that was weird what's meta you asked i'm glad you asked (laughs) you know what me thinking about what i just said is kind of meta so to define meta it is it means thinking about a thing itself it's seeing the thing from a higher perspective instead of from within the thing to be self-aware right it's almost like you appreciate The Dark Knight Rises more because you watch the director's commentary cut. So we're hearing Christopher Nolan's thoughts on it. So then when you go back and watch it, you go, oh, I see. He made this choice because he was lazy. <laughs> so you don't have to be a professional at something or be have professional knowledge, but it does help to describe things as meta because to be meta, you have to first understand the thing and then have the higher knowledge to look like the definition says above the thing and then discuss things about it. So basically, it's just a fancy way of saying that we both expertly understand this topic, and now we can break down this topic, pick it apart, and discuss greater literary 
thematical things about it. Right. It's sort of the counterpart to any character that breaks the fourth wall. They, which actually wasn't a scheduled vocab word today, but, right, any like Deadpool, he will constantly reference the fact that he's in a movie. So, likewise, we get the joke because we meta know that we are watching a movie. Thus, thus again, becoming self-aware. Exactly. Us, us aware that he's in a movie making a joke about a movie, and he being meta because he's in a movie making a joke about the movie, and it, it, it just, it's a, it keeps going from there. Exactly. It's like, you know, it's like those mirrors you see at like in the store that have the light bulbs around it. Just an infinity, and... infinity mirror. That's what Thanos should have got and said. <laughs> just go to Pottery Barn, Thanos. Just, just forget the stones. That's too much effort. Uh, I guess they would kind of nerf his glove, though. Exactly. So, what does the word nerf mean? Yes, those foam little rubber bullets that you buy in the toy guns <laughs> and you shoot. <laughs> nerf. So, you've probably heard it. So... I play Super Smash Bros. a lot, and I'm like, oh, they really nerfed my favorite fighting character. People who play Pokemon Go remember that uh, Vaporeon was nerfed. So, nerf means to make something soft and squishy, and basically not as powerful as it used to be. It's no longer a threat. It's usually to make games balanced, but they usually break your favorite character, and now they're obsolete and not usable. Game developers, nerf does not mean the character is no longer viable. That's right. Kicker, right? Call, right, calling you out, like sure, like balance them out, but just don't don't cripple them. That's that's so much more depressing. So to read from the definition, if ever something gets made less worthwhile than it had been originally, it is considered nerfed. But to give a little history lesson, something I didn't know, the term originated from a game called Ultima Online. At one point, the developers reduced the power of swords in melee combat. This caused a lot of players to complain and say they were no longer had swords, but nerf bats. And then from there, anytime anything was, you know, powered down, made lesser, reduced in strength, people just commonly refer to it as it being nerfed. Yep. So then our last uh, word of the day is hat. You know, that thing, that cool thing you do, you put on your glasses and you type really fast on your computer and the code appears on your screen and then, you know, magic happens. Exactly. Honestly, honestly, no hack should just replace the word magic. We need someone to magic, magic. this door open. Yes. Oh, because they have. <laughs> Is hacking just the uh, the sci-fi version of a of a, like a wizard? Yes. Yes. Pretty much. But so what is hacking, right? You, you, it is not. It is no longer just learning your friend's password and going to Facebook. That's or, that's or not no, that's what, what that's become. Yeah, that's that what it's not, become. Yeah. That is not hacking. So hacking. Hacked is a word you see a lot in social media today. Usually, usually incorrectly used to describe getting on someone's account because one, they left it open. Did you break into someone's house today if the door is unlocked? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Right? Yeah. So hacking means to break and disrupt computer code to your gain in some way, and so exploiting glitches, back doors doesn't necessarily involve you know maybe actually classically changing code but you're still hacking the game's program and an episode maybe two three weeks ago we talked about glitches and i talked about we talked about the pokemon cloning glitch i'm not opening the code of the game but i am breaking the programming through a roundabout way to get a desired result which was the cloning of a pokemon right and to once again urban dictionary the exact definition is hack is supposed to mean unauthorized access to computers and computer networks through, again, breaking the code of or network. Now it just means to post, post hilarious statuses on someone's Facebook wall. LOL. Hacked. Ugh. <laughs> so again, unless you are breaking code, network, or the desired function of the thing, you are not hacking. Right. And I should, I, I would like to add in here, breaking it, right, like you said, for cloning, isn't just breaking and destroying the system like a lot of online games you'll you might see people throw out the word hacked because they've hacked the game and ah my character is now immune to like it's invulnerable it's like you don't have to break the system badly you can break the system good yeah to again just to your benefit exactly and that is all the geek jargon we have for you today join us next time in this segment which It'll come up again. Yeah, at some point. We always manage to come (laughs) full full circle. circle. But the power hour, the powerless hour we told you about at the beginning, we're going to begin 
right now. For preface, me and Adele had this discussion a little bit the other day at the gym, and we came up with rules to make sure this is fair. Rule number one, only uh, main or canon characters only, none of the offshoots, no aliens, they all have to be from Earth. Because what's a superpower to us is just normal to them, and that gets tricky. No derivative character, so that hurts me. I can't include all 47 members of the Bat family. <laughs> um, heroes only, because, again, he doesn't want to face the Batman rogues gallery. <laughs> again, because everyone in that universe is just a series of people without powers. Yeah, it's great. It's hilarious. It's oh, awesome. so just to give a little backstory to this. What this powerless hour is, we're trying to see which universe has more people who don't have powers. I made a statement that Marvel seems to just have a gotlet of people without powers. And Jared was like, there's an even amount, there's an even number of DC people with the same thing. And I was like, no, there isn't. Of course there are. I know. Admittedly, I might shoot myself in the foot here and say, I think you still have the leg up. But we're going to see. We're going to go down the list. One last rule, though. Augmentations, if you can dismantle a person of their powers they count as powerless. So, for example, like, if your powers just come from a suit or item, and if you take off the suit and or item, and you're powerless, you don't have a power. For example, if they don't have to make a special jail for you, if they can just take your thing away and put you in a cell with regular people and you can't break out... You're a regular pre people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll go first. Number one, a Green Lantern. You know, Without the power yeah. ring, any of the six from Earth... Okay, fine, fine, fine. One of the most famous and obvious people who don't realize doesn't have powers, Iron Man. Okay, let's see. Or, uh, I'm going to include Batman, obviously. I will include Black Widow. Okay. Uh, we discussed this beforehand. I'm allowed to use Robin because he is different. One of the Robins, not one of the, I think, again, six Robins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you get your Robin. <laughs> yes. I'll use another Kung Fu master, Daredevil. No, no, no. We discussed this. He, the, no. The, uh, you the, put the can, very, can, can, the very can, chemical can. spill that made him blind enhances senses like a thousand fold. Can he get out the jail cell? Uh, we're just talk, can any psychic get out of the, like, telepath? Yes. yes. No. I, Charles Xavier can escape the jail cell. You, no. Just nobody goes with him. <laughs> okay, so, so, I'm going to put so, you so down so for they're, Daredevil. So they're going to leave him to die like they're never going to bring him food. Just... Yes. <laughs> they get a, get a robot to, like, <laughs> gil deliver him food. Can I, no, I... That, that goes again. They have to make special requirements and additions. No, that's, on, I... that's only if they want to feed him. <laughs> so... Okay, I'm going to put you down for half. Oh, no. Half a point. Oh, Oh. Yeah, so it's three to two and a half. Oh, oh, Bat Batman got imbued with some magical, mystical in the pits no, of Lazarus. No, no th Damn. that was only temporary. Yeah, that doesn't count. Oh, oh so, so Daredevil's power is he, he can hear a fly from, from across the room. He can read, like, the ink on paper. Oh. Can a normal line person do this? Without the intentions of the paper. And we talked about this also. Batman could take like can take his spine being broken and just, you know, recover. No, he had to have an entire movie to recover from it. <laughs> Nothing helps heal the back better than dangling loosely from a ceiling. He seems to take bullets much better than a regular person also. I these things aside, he technically has no powers. Also, oh, so reading Braille at a hyper <laughs> three, you get three. We're evenly matched at three points. Okay, uh, you heard it first. Jared thinks, Oh, I can really read this Braille so good. I, I'm saying, I so think, good. I think, I think Daredevil's senses are on par with the Spider Man's, who we, nobody argues as a power. So, so he's dodging bullets now, doesn't he? No, I, I don't read Daredevil, like, he, he does the thing like. Oh, I hear someone about to, like, pull the trigger, so I preemptively move. Yeah, I, I, okay. You, we, bo we both have three points. Okay. okay. Green Arrow. <laughs> Hawkeye. Uh, Blue Beetle. Um, that's that Black Widow already? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll say yes. Okay. Crap. Uh, to help me out. Who just said Blue Beetle? Uh-huh. Uh... -huh. uh... Why am I drawing a blank here? Ha 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 ha. I've already, you know, um, uh, Ant Man. The Atom. 
Oh, Falcon. Okay. Star Girl. Who's Star Girl? She's, it's one of the, okay, remember there's like the crime fighting duo that's like stars and stripes. She has like the cosmic converter belt that just gives her powers. Sure. Yes. Bucky. Yeah. Arsenal. He's the, he's the arrow sidekick. I thought if we, we get, discussed... if we get, Ro- no, if we get a Robin, can't I get Arsenal? Okay. All right. Then I get War Machine. <sighs> Whatever. Okay, fine. Arsenal, War Machine. Okay. Can I count Alfred? <laughs> He's not, no. Do you know how, how he does first aid on Bruce Wayne on a daily basis? That, that's a paramedic. Okay, that's well, not a power. And are our paramedics not heroes? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He has no oh. powers. That's the name <laughs> of the. <laughs> no. Okay, okay. Lois Lane. <laughs> what is our powers? Hard, Subdu- hard. Subduing Superman. No, subduing. Subduing? No, hard-cracking journalism. Do you know how many plots of Lex Luthor she's brought down? So, so, so we're just counting real-world heroes now. Okay, okay, fine. Booster Gold. All right, I'll give you that. There we go. Uh, Star-Lord. Uh, okay. The, the... Wait. He's half alien, though. So? We said no aliens. You said from Earth. Mm, okay, fine. <laughs> uh... James Gordon? No. Okay, okay. Um, Manhunter. Part of the Birds of Prey? Purple helmet? Any a villain? No, she... Well, the sheep that's part of the Birds of Prey. They're like... They're more like anti-hero, roguish. They're heroes. Man, we're, we're, we're really just delving into the nobodies here. Shh. They, Birds of Prey are a big canonical, big hitter. Isn't that a band name? For, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Who are we talking about again? The man hunter. She she looks she looks like excuse Scarlet me, Witch. Excuse, excuse she, me as I Google every non main Marvel character ever. She she looks like Scarlet Witch but purple. You, I, I'm, I'm not looking. I, I I just I just believe you. Okay okay okay. Yes. All right. You you got you you're, you're nobody. Okay okay. Um. Okay. Can I consider the Wasp a hero? She's not like M. She flies. It has stingers. <sighs> is she not derivative of Ant Man? I, I, I mean, she's a wasp. Is a wasp derivative of an ant? <laughs> Check. Okay. Uh, Amanda Waller. She isn't. These are just people. She's a government agent. She's a, so, she was the one in charge of the Suicide Squad, assembling all that. Their secret organization. So, so is Nick Fury a magical hero now? Yeah, I guess. One in one. <laughs> You'll find DC and Marvel have a lot of answers for each other. Ugh. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Um, oh, you know what? I might have been thinking Huntress, who I have written down next. Huntress has powers? No, she doesn't. What do you mean she doesn't? I don't think she does. What do you mean she, she, she doesn't have mystical, some bull crap? No, you're thinking like Artemis. Are well, no, sure? Artemis was all... Well, okay, I just, I just won't include Huntress. Adam Strange. Who's Adam Strange? He's the guy who uses the Zeta beams to go to the other planet to be a hero. He is, regardless, from Earth, though. And powerless otherwise. But then he goes to the the place. No, he doesn't gain powers there. He just has like another like suit, like a rocket pack. Mm. He's he's a very like retro looking hero. All right, guys, I'm not gonna lie for those watching. Jared has literally delved into like this list of people. Like, there's four people in this I've never even heard of. So hang so, on, I, I can keep going. I can keep going. Here uh, we go. And, and, he, and he's painting me into a corner because there's a lot of people who don't have powers on my alien list. That was just, that was part of him. Let's see. Let's let's see here. Just saying, because if we include aliens, I'm going to say Superman on Krypton. Powerless. All right, let's see. Here, go go say this next person. We're still we're still one and one, so say say. No, no, I'm, I'm up one with Adam Strange. Oh. oh, the Punisher doesn't have any powers. Yeah, okay. Um, Cyborg. Duh. Oh, yeah, cyborg counts. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Per the rules. Per our carefully crafted in Jared's favors rules. Yes, because I (laughs) I have completely uh, non-biased rules. Who is... Oh, yeah, that's that's Falcon. Hold on, give me a second. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Give me a second. Hey, oh, Jamie Murdoch's. 
Wait, who's that? I, I don't know. He's like a regular dude. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Wait, oh yeah, I remember. I was gonna say Rocket Raccoon counts because I looked it up. He is from Earth. He is a Earthly rat. Jared tried to tell me <laughs> that he was a space raccoon. There are humanoid species. Why aren't there raccoonoid species? Yeah, whatever. Okay, okay. Rocket Raccoon. Okay. Uh, Doctor Fate, because without his helmet, he's just a regular person. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. He does. He's just. Currently, he's just some kid who has Dr. Fate's helmet. But Dr. Fate isn't the kid that's just... I'm. He's different than Captain Marvel because regardless, at any given time, Billy Batson has that power. He has access to that power. Yet, per your rule, if you just take away the helmet... But then the helmet itself, because Captain Marvel can astro project himself from the helmet. Wait, who can? I mean, I go... Oh, yeah, I was like, what? The, the dude you just said. No, oh, no, because he, yeah, he, he did an episode of Justice League. Like, his helmet fell off, and then, like, he was just like, Astro Body. <sighs> okay, what about Firestorm? Without the two of them combined, Firestorm doesn't exist. He, you literally have to fuse with someone to be Firestorm. So is that saying the Wonder Twins don't have powers then? I, I don't know how that... They're, they're not part of this main DC bit. Oh, oh, main... Exit like five of those people. No, out these there. are all part of the current. They've all appeared. Birds of prey, like one the twins. They were part of the original Justice League for crying out loud. I doubt you on that fact. Huh? I don't. I doubt you. I don't have the wherewithal you know to what? defend myself. You know what? Oh, you know what? We're pausing this conversation. Okay. To prove. Wait, wait. Okay. I'll, I'll just. I'll just name them now. Okay. Wildcat. Oh, fine. Ghost Rider. Because without that. The mystical mojo. No, he is cursed. No, you no, can't take away not, his no, curse. No, yes, you can. We all You're saw. We, no, we all saw the movie where Nicolas Cage is like, "No, I'm gonna have this curse, and I'm gonna own it." Canon? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, did I say Wildcat? Mockingbird. Huh. Katniss Everdeen. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't even know. I just looked her up. She, I thought she she doesn't have any powers. I thought that I thought this was supposed to be like Canary. But or, how about like, Oracle? You know what? Um, you, 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 <laughs> talky talky tawny tiger. The just everyday anthropomorphic tiger that's part of the Captain Marvel series. You know what? Since Jared is clearly the clearly question, not taking this serious, Mister Terrific, you know Jonah what? Hex. Oh look at this long shot. He just has knives that he shoots out of his 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 little contraption here. Then what about, like, Deadshot? Then what about... Wait. Deadshot, Deadshot is different than Deathstroke. They are different people. I thought we were doing villains. Look at, look at Jerry. Oh, yeah. Look at, look, look at this guy. Whoops. Just bending the rules Whoops. to his whims. Whoops. Okay, okay. I, I'm on a new mission. I'm going to wave the white flag on this because <laughs> I did not come prepared. And you got, like, one, I don't even know who half these people are. The the, the raving birds. The, the I didn't... The, Whatever. Okay. Okay. Yes. But all right. The moral victory is mine. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Jared. That, so with that, I believe we've probably reached the end of our show. No, we have it. Oh, we have it. We got one more. We the, have it. The Wonder Twins. The Wonder Twins. Were a part of the original Justice League. Okay, then I get two more points because both each twin counts for me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> First of all, first of all, we're debating if people combining or not counts as a, constitute as yeah. power or With, powerless. You put them in, tef- in different cages, and they can't do squat. Uh, mm. So, so, so can I count Tony and his suit as two different people? No, because the suit's a robot. Otherwise, like I would count like Red Tornado and just say you can turn him off. <laughs> that was confusing that he's a robot. And yet he has a daughter, a canonical human daughter, or a human-ish daughter. It's weird. Uh, so fine, they, they, all these superheroes are just really people with a suit that wanted to fight. Uh. Yes. Okay, admittedly though, more of Marvel's main cast <laughs> is powerless for some reason. Thank you. I don't know why. But... With that, we've now reached the end of this episode. You heard our very heated debate on who probably has more powerless heroes. What Jared meant to say, you heard the debate of Jared just wanted to be right and came at me with like all these absolute heroes. But you learn jargon, like how I don't know if half those things were canon. <laughs> it's kind of meta discussion. Yeah, uh. you know, you really 
hacked me there because you wrote on my Facebook that you won. Hey, it was a beefy to- topic that managed to tank us out into this uh, episode. And there was another word that we used that was... I think we used all our words. It was, was it all five? Yeah. Let's say it was. All right. And then Digimon. Dun, 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 Digimon. For Full Circle, I'm Joe Fredette at Toon Velo. I'm Odell Harmon Jr. Follow me at Odell Harmon Jr. And go to follow Jared especially and tell him how... Right I was. Sure. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, and you know, you could also write those comments on I, um, Full Circle accounts and Instagram and Twitter at FC Podcast. Until next time, folks, y'all have a great week.